Good morning, Dario. Good morning, Gary. And how are you today? Yeah, welcome to Cog Guitars. <laughs> Thank you. So you're British? Yes. Uh, from where exactly? Birmingham. Birmingham. Right in the middle. Um, and since ma how many years are you in Berlin? Oh, 20 years now. Look, did you always do this, this job in Berlin? Um, when I first moved here, I tried a few different things, but now it just, it just never leaves me. Mm. It just never leaves me. I, I read on the on the sign outside that you build guitars, you repair guitars, yes. repairs, setups, repairs, restorations, and resurrections. I mean, <laughs> my God! Which be... which guitar <laughs> did you did you bring back to life? On an old Regal acoustic guitar from the twenties. Um, that was quite something. That was one of the most um, memorable resurrections. But it was just a, such a lovely guitar. Oh, and then there's another story about um, a Gibson J45 that um, um, a jealous girlfriend put a foot through. Things like But this happens quite, quite well, so, so many me, times. Tell me, tell me about it. So, I mean, you know, he's, 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 a, he's a bit of a playboy and his girlfriend finds out that he's been playing with another girl and she, girls will always go for what you love, yeah? And she just put a foot through the top of it, so. He bought the guitar in a box, <laughs> <laughs> box of bits. And, um, but it was a, um, the top was really badly broken. The mm. braces were badly broken. And it was a case of put it all back together, but the scars were quite obvious. And I said to him, look, it's a shame that it looks like this. Why don't we do a sunburst finish on the front? Mm -hmm. um, and then it was practically invisible. It looked great. It's, I mean, it was back to his guitar. Um, I, I actually like scars on guitars. I love scars on guitars. I mean, you look, see the photographs there. I mean, yeah. I don't really like it when I get a guitar for repair that's 20 years old and there's not a mark on it. I mean, what does anybody <laughs> play it? Yeah, it looks no. it's alive when there yeah, are yeah, some. Yeah, yeah, some yeah, yeah. It's characters, stretches. the stories, it's everything. Because you have very special kind of guitars. You're using skateboards. How came up the idea of uh, using skateboards for guitars? Skateboards, I've, I've seen guitars made of skateboards for like 20 years and it was normally just a skateboard with an old strap neck screwed on it. It looks horrible. And then I came across a work by um, this Argentinian builder, Ezekiel Galasso, who'd taken this to an absolute art form and I was just fascinated by it. And it took me weeks of just staring at pictures, staring at, looking, just trawling everything and to come up with my version of, of, of how this was done. Mm -hmm. um, but to make the whole instrument from two skateboards, that was the challenge. But um, this is basically what they're about. Um, you, take, you take one skateboard mm -hmm. and you cut it in half on an angle like that and you fold it over and you join the two halves together so as you can see that you yeah. still get I, I will work the shape down to about this this midpoint here and then just leave it as raw skateboards then um, and then the shape here is just works and works and works um, and so yeah and then the neck lengthways and you fold it over and glue the two halves together so yeah, you still got the two, mm -hmm. the two ends of the skateboard because you need every millimeter of the skateboard. But because of the nature of skateboards, everyone is absolutely individual, absolutely unique. How's the um, the resonance of, uh, of this voice? I mean, it's pretty good. They're very bright because it's very hard wood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really hard wood. Um, so they are quite bright, and my favourite pickups have always been P90s. Um, but with the the thickness that I have, and with the hardness of the mm. wood, everything tends to sound like um, a single coil. Um, um, I mean, I'm left-handed, and I'm a terrible player, but you'll get the picture. Um, <laughs> Keep setting the volume down. We'll be nineties together at the same time. Yeah. So, because the sound was so bright, I thought, well, how about if I put two P nineties together and wire them as one pickup? Yeah. And it's it works great. It works really good. I'm really pleased with it. Um, and it gives the gives the heavy sound that I want. Not over heavy it's still bright it's still got um treble and it's still got bass but it's just a lovely balance and i really like it so that's the that's the way to go i love just the simplicity of one volume control 
Um, um, stop by Talpeach Bridge. Just keep it simple. Keep it simple. Um, and it's me it's not meant to be um, an orchestra model. Yeah, <laughs> it's meant to be a pure rock and roll machine. Yeah. Punk, surf, whatever you like. Um, but just so easy to carry. So portable. Um, I haven't put. It's perfect for a, for a travelling musician. Yeah, yeah. I haven't even put any um, strap buttons on this yet. But you can screw the neck off and put it in a suitcase if you really want to. Um, you can't break the headstock. I mean, you just cannot break the headstock. I mean, my God, it's had kids jumping up and down on this. Um, <laughs> so you just can't break it. Um, it's still great. I love them. And the necks are so stable. My God, they just stay. They just stay put. Um, the intonation is always great. The the action is always lovely. They just don't budge. And I do not put in um, adjustable truss rods. No. Um, I go for the old Martin style bar truss rod, um, which can you can just see the end uh -huh. of there. Yeah. And it means it's it's just a fit it forget it idea. And I put them in. It's a bit more complicated than putting them um, an adjustable in. But once it's set in, once it's epoxied in the neck cannot move. It just cannot go backwards, forwards, sideways or anything. I'm fascinated by this, uh, this uh, star guitar. Well, this one comes from, um, as you can see, um, it's a Sternberg calendar. And um, Sterney, Sterney beer as it's called, yeah, is one of my favorites. Well, my absolute favorites. <laughs> That's just an over large bottle top, yeah. Um, which I always loved the bottle tops. And I was thinking about shit that would make great um, volume of tone controls. Oh, that's and then, beautiful. Yeah. And then once I thought that, then the whole guitar just came to me in seconds. Um, the, these are actual bottle tops, just cut off their glass, everything, yeah? Um, so, and then I just um, take out the middle center knurled section of a normal um, tone, tone, tone volume control and glue them in and so they fit perfectly. The little marker dots on the neck mm -hmm. um, are also little um, stars with red surrounds, so they look exactly like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the marker dots. Then you've got the the star on the headstock, and then the big star in the middle, uh, which is one p ninety p. How long up. how long did you take to build it up? To build it up, um, I suppose it was about a hundred hours. And who bought it? So. This guitar, sometimes I'll build a guitar and it'll be sold before I've actually finished it. And sometimes a guitar might hang around for a couple of years before sure. it goes, but they all go in the end. But it's just, it's just the way it is. And this guitar stayed with me for close on three years and it was just always there and it played great and it sounded really good and everybody loved it, but it was not their cup of tea. Um, and then one night, it was about 10 to seven, um, I was just, basically just finishing up for the day making sure that everything I wanted to do was done and this guy came past and he was in um, he was a psycho Billy guitar player um, and he came past the window and he looked and he saw the guitar and he just came and he said did you build that and he said, yeah. and he said can I try it and he tried it and he loved it and he said how much is it and so on and he said okay I'll buy it <laughs> and so the whole deal was done in less than 10 minutes I mean this was just the fastest sale I've ever had in my life um, and this guitar had been with me for like close, like I say, close on three years. And I mean, I should have been happy that it was sold and it was finally going to be played and gone to a new home where it was going to be played rather than just sit in the window because a guitar should be played, not just, it's not a piece of decoration, it's an instrument. And I was depressed for weeks. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> because it, did, I mean, I come in, there's just a big hole where it used to be, yeah? And so this one, when I, redid the kitchen and I made the work surface for the kitchen and cut the, the square out, put the sink in and I, I was left with this piece of wood that I just couldn't bear to throw away and I reduced the size of the the flying V shape to fit this piece of wood which made it a whole lot more comfortable and as I was cutting the wood out and I realised that it was not so thick at all really but that's okay and then a cabinet maker friend of mine came in with this this linoleum, which is furniture grade linoleum. Um, and he said, do you want this? You want, I've got this piece left over. And so I put that blue on the top of the, the wood to make the body and another piece for the headstock there. The red button yeah. is the kill switch. 
Sorry. <laughs> da, 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 um, and I wanted to keep it really simple. So 1P90 in the bridge position, tone and volume, and then the kill switch. This part here, the guy that bought this guitar came back from Las Vegas about <laughs> three weeks ago, and I'd asked him to bring me some gambling chips back, which I use for the back of the skateboard guitars. <laughs> Um, and so one of his missions was to go to one of the casinos and get me some gambling chips. But he ended up <laughs> losing a thousand dollars in one day. He bought me a few chips back, but he also bought his guitar back in. He said, can you put me one, can you inlay one of these chips into the back of my guitar so I never do that again? <laughs> <laughs> and it looks great, it looks really good. Um, acoustics are my favourite to build. I love building acoustics. Um, and each one of these is absolutely unique as well. I never make two guitars the same. Um, I might use the same body shape, um, but the headstocks will be different, the bindings will be different. Um, marker dots I only tend to put on rock and roll guitars, and it's a sunburst, so it's rock and roll. Um, bridges will change, the little detail around the, um, the fingerboard here will change, uh, the colours will change. Um, this one is mahogany. Mahogany, rosewood fingerboard, spruce top, but I mostly do with all mahogany, uh, mahogany tops, which I really love. Head plates are generally maple, and the mechanics are just just about always clusons. I just love them, um, but they're small, they're short scale, and they have a nice sound, and they're very comfortable to play. Um, yeah, you try it. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, yeah, I'm not a guitar like player. It's <laughs> alright. Yeah, great sound. Uh, this question, like, it's a bit different. Do you remember which one was the first vinyl record you ever bought? First vinyl record I ever bought, yeah? Of course I do. Of course I do. <laughs> it was You Really Got Me by The Kinks, yeah? Okay, so and was the 45, the single? The 45, the, seven the single, yeah, that was all I could afford. I was only like, like nine or something like that, yeah. And my mum and dad had bought me a record player for Christmas and they'd bought me like two or three records to go with it, but it was bloody Cliff Richards or something like that and I didn't want that. Mm -hmm. And so as soon as the shops opened, yeah, um, then I was straight down to the local record shop and I bought this uh, You Really Got Me by The Kinks and I loved it. There was um, a completely different guitar sound. Oh, it was like it was T64. Just, I mean, it was just amazing. And it was just so exciting, and I just loved it. And I played that record just time and time. Just it finished, then it started again, as you do with 45s, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Because you've got one record, that's sure. it. And then the next one I bought was um, The Beach Boys, um, Good Vibrations. So, yeah, after that, it's a blur. <laughs> <laughs> after that, it's a blur. But I remember very well the first one I ever bought was The Kings. But yeah. do you know that, I mean, I don't know if it's a legend, but Dave Davis from Kings. To, to get this crunchy sound, yeah. he used a razor yeah, and yeah. cut the speaker. Yeah, so yeah, 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 it sound yeah. cuts yeah, on yeah, the speaker yeah. to have this. Poke holes in it, cut it with a razor blade. Yeah, Absolutely yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. But this is what, this yeah, is what you do. This is how you, you, you build you, up a sound. You, get, you sound. get a tube amp, you crank it right up, and then you start on the speaker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gary, I'd be sunk. I'd be sunk. Th thanks so much for, uh, for having me. Yeah, and, uh, you're, you're welcome, mate. And be welcome. You know, yeah. like having a look at the beautiful job you're doing as a yeah. guitar player, I'm really yeah, thankful yeah, yeah. to people yeah. like you. <laughs> Cheers, okay, Dario. Cheers. It was great. Thanks, mate.